Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on The Two Gentlemen of Verona and we get to hear from Launce today in Act 3, Scene 1, which I promise we're going to finish up with this scene today. It's been a long one and we've been on a journey. We started this scene with Proteus ratting out Valentine to the Duke and then the Duke and Valentine had a conversation that ended up in Valentine getting banished and then Proteus and Launce came back in and they're chatting with Valentine and, and Proteus is being like sort of supportive friend even though it's his fault that Valentine just got banished. Um, but then at the at the end of yesterday he was like, okay, you know, there's nothing that you can do if you stay here so you really should go so that you don't get killed and hey, let's let's get out of here right quick and I'll, uh, if you send letters to me, I'll make sure that Sylvia gets them and all that sort of thing. So then um, Valentine and Proteus leave and they tell Lance Launce to get Speed, who is Valentine's servant, to send him along with Valentine since Valentine is being banished from Milan. Um, so then Launce has a moment on stage by himself and he says, I am but a fool, look you, and yet I have the wit to think my master is a kind of knave. But that's all one, if he be but one knave. <laughs> he lives not now that knows me to be in love, yet I am in love. But a team of horses shall not pluck that from me, nor who tis I love. And yet tis a woman. <laughs> but what woman? I will not tell myself. And yet tis a milkmaid. Yet tis not a maid, for she hath had gossips. Yet. Tis a maid, for she is her master's maid and serves for wages. She hath more qualities than a water spaniel, which is much in a bare Christian. Here is the catalogue of her condition. Imprimus, she can fetch and carry. <laughs> Why, a horse can do no more. Nay, a horse cannot fetch, but only carry. Therefore, she is better than a jade. Item, she can milk. Look you, a sweet virtue in a maid with clean hands. And then speed enters. So we got to like cut there. But what this is, he starts off by saying that he knows that Valentine is, or sorry, he knows that Proteus is not on the up and up right now. But he's like, but then he devolves into the fact that he is in love with this milkmaid. And he's made a list of like pros and cons about her. And he's going through that list. That's what the end thing is where he's, compares her to a horse and all that sort of a thing. So he's got this letter and then Speed comes in and is like, hey, where's your master? And there's some wordplay and all that sort of stuff. And then he, and Speed's like, what is that that you're, that you're reading? And um, Lance is like, well, nothing. And, and you can't read it anyway. And Speed's like, yes, I can read. Show it to me. So Speed takes the letter and starts going through the list of, of pros and cons about this woman that Lance is in love with. And Lance is defending those things as they come up. So all the things that are cons, he's like, that actually isn't so bad. And all the things that are pros, he's like, yeah, see, that's a, a great thing. And this, this goes on for a little while until Lance is like, oh, and by the way, your master's been banished and they're leaving and you better go. And Speed's like, what? Hey, he's going to be so mad that I'm not there yet. So he runs away. And that's the end of Act 3, Scene 1. So we have a love triangle. We have a friendship betrayal. We have a banishment all of this stuff going on. We also still have Julia who d decided to dress up like a man and come to Milan. She needs to come back into the story at some point. So there's still plenty left to go in this, even though we've, we have, there's like 10 days ish left, 10, 12 days left of this till the end of the play. Cause we are halfway through act three, but anyway, come on back for more while we figure out how all of these crazy puzzle pieces are going to fit together to complete a play. I'll see you tomorrow for more. Mwah.